Okay, this video is going to be for section two of part two in unit 12. And what we're going to be writing here is the standard form of the ellipse is when we're given the general equation of an ellipse. But the first thing that we need to do is that when we're given the general equation of the ellipse, how do we identify from that equation if we actually have an oval, an ellipse? So here's your general form of a conic, which is what you saw in the last video. And your job is, first of all, looking at this equation, how do you know if you have an ellipse? You know two ways. One, A and B are not the same number. That's number one. A and B won't be equal to one another. The second way you'll know That will just stay there. The second way that you know is that A and B have the same sign. So in that general equation, if A and B are not the same number, but they do have the same sign, so either A and B are both positive or both negative, then you're going to have an ellipse. Now, again, we're going to go ahead and try to get the general form into a standard form for the ellipse. And that's going to require completing the square. So here's your first example. We have 9x squared plus 4y squared, etc. We have a equals 9, because that is the coefficient of the x squared term. We have b is equal to 4. And we'll note that a and b are both different, and a and b have the same sign. Therefore, we do have an ellipse. Okay, the next instruction. So we took care of identifying the conic. Now we'll go and write the conic in standard form. And the way we'll do that is the same steps that I had used to write the equation of a circle in standard form. So I'm going to go ahead and group the x's together, and I'll keep those in black. I'm going to go and group the y's together, and I'll keep those in red. And I'm going to go and move that extra term over to the other side, so I have an equals negative 36. Next, I need, I'm going to complete the square on each of these parts, in the black and in the red, for x's and y's. So I need my coefficient of that x squared and y squared to be 1. So I'm going to divide everything from the black by 9 or I'll factor out a 9 out of both terms. I'm going to do the same thing in red. I'm going to take a 4 out of both terms because I want my coefficient of y squared to be 1. Nothing's changing on the other side of the equation. Next, we'll go on and complete the square. So in black, we'll have 9 x squared plus the b value divided by 2, and squared is going to be a positive 4, and in red, if I take negative 6 and divide it by 2, I get negative 3. And then when I square negative 3, I'm going to get a positive 9. Now, I am adding on extra parts here. So I do have to add to the other side of the equation, plus the 9 times 4. Because again, I had this 9 times this 4 that didn't exist before in the equation at the beginning. And I also need to add a plus this part, the 4 times the 9. Now, when I simplify everything, x squared plus 4x plus 4, that's a perfect square trinomial. So I'm going to get x plus 2 quantity squared when I factor. y squared minus 6y plus 9. Again, the 4 stays on the outside, and I'm going to have this factor into y minus 3 quantity squared. I'm going to simplify these numbers on the right side of the equation. 9 times 4 is going to be 36. That will cancel out with that green 36. And I'm just going to be left with a 36 altogether. You should know that the standard form of an ellipse will always have equal to 1 
on the right side of the equation. So what I want to do finally is I'm going to take this 36 and divide everything by 36. So I'm going to divide the right side by 36. I'm going to divide each of the left parts by 36. And what I end up getting, I'm going to get 9 over 36 reduces to a fourth. So I have x plus 2 quantity squared over 4 plus, and actually I'll write this in purple, but it's going to be the same thing. I'm going to do y minus 3, quantity squared, and then 4 divided by 36 is going to be a ninth. So this will be divided by 9, and we do have equals 1. This is my standard form of the ellipse. Okay, what does this tell me? My center is H and K, because I took care of the conic and standard form. Now I need to identify the key components of the conic. The center. H is negative 2, and K is 3. That means that my center is going to be negative 2, comma 3. Next, I need major and minor vertices. The major vertice. This graph is going to be lying along its vertical axis because the 9 here is bigger than the 4. The 9 goes with the y, and if the y value is bigger, that means I'm going to have the ellipse standing up in the y direction. So what that means is my major vertices are going to go up 3. And let me just show some work on the side here. I'm going to have b is equal to 2 and a is equal to 3. And the way I got that is a squared was equal to 9 and b squared was equal to 4. So I have a equals 3 and b equals 2. In order to get my major vertices, I'm going to have to add 3 to the y value to my center. So my major vertices are going to be negative 2, comma, I'm going to add 3 plus 3. I'm also going to have to do negative 2, because that's going to be the top coordinate. I'm also going to need to do 3 minus 3 for the bottom coordinate. And I get that this is going to be confusing, and it may be helpful for you to draw a picture, which is what I'll do in the next example. Uh, when I simplify this math, I'm going to get negative 2, comma, 6, and I'm going to get negative 2, comma, 0. This is for the major vertices. And let's get rid of this. Escape. Okay, for the minor vertices. The minor vertices are going to be affected by the 4, the 2 value. So again, B is 2 here. I'm going to go right 2, and I'm going to go left 2. So if I go right 2, and again I'm at negative 2, I'm going to be at 0. And then I'm going to go left 2, and I'm going to be at negative 4. So I have negative 2 plus 2, comma, the Y value is going to stay the same. I'm also going to have negative 2 minus 2 comma 3, and these are equal to 0 comma 3 and negative 4 comma 3. Now I'm not quite done yet. There's a lot to this problem and I know it's a long problem. The last thing I needed to do is find my foci. Okay, now to find the foci, c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. It's just like Pythagorean theorem, except there's a minus in between the a and the b. And the way you're doing this, a squared, the value of a squared is 9. So I'm going to do c squared is equal to 9 minus b squared, the value of b squared is equal to 4. Therefore, c is equal to plus and minus root 5. Therefore, the foci 
the foci are going to be along the major axis. So I'm going to be adding the y values here because this is where my foci should be. I'm going to be adding and subtracting to the y values of the center. The location of the foci are going to be the x value is going to stay the same and the y value will be 3 plus root 5 and 3 minus root 5. I'll box everything in in purple so you know what the answer is. And then your job is to do this problem completely on your own in the next example. Okay, let's try it. Pause the video, try the problem on your own, please. So hopefully you got this answer. We do have an ellipse. Here's your completing the square process. You should get 12 on the right side of the equation. And if you didn't get any of these numbers, please pause the video to go ahead and check your work. Your answer is going to be in the purple box here. Now, I'm going to identify the key components, but I want to give you a minute to pause the video if you need to catch up. Okay, let's go ahead and go over the components now. The center, H is 1. K is negative 3. It's always the opposite signs of whatever's inside the parentheses. So your center is going to be 1, comma, negative 3. Now I promise that I'm going to be sketching the graph this time so you guys can actually see it a little bit. 1, negative 3 is right here. That's where my center is. Is this graph standing up? Is this ellipse standing up or down? That's always something that you're looking at for this uh, conic section. We see that the graph is standing up because the bigger number in the denominator is with the y value. When the bigger number is with the y value, that means the ellipse is standing in the y direction, which is going to be vertical. Okay, next. Major axis will be a vertical axis. So, major axis. My a value, a squared value is 4. My b squared value is 2, which means a is 2 and b is square root of 2. So I'm going to be going up 2 from 4. I'm sorry, I'm going to be going up 2 from negative 3. Here again was my center. I'm going up 2 now, so I'm going to be at this point here. And I'll put this in a different color for you. I'm going to be going down 2. which means that from that point, my coordinate is going to be 1, comma, negative 1, that's the upper part, and 1, comma, negative 5. For the minor axis, I'll do this in red for you. I'm going to be going over in the left and the right. I'm going over by a value of b. So I'm going to be doing 1 plus square root of 2, and 1 minus square root of 2. The y value is going to be staying the same. And finally, for the foci. Again, the foci equation is just like Pythagorean, just a tiny bit different. It's a squared minus b squared. The value of a squared is already 4. Do not square that number, so c squared is equal to 4. Minus b squared is 2. You get c is equal to 2, uh, the square root of 2, I'm sorry, it's plus and minus. This is for the foci. So your answer for the foci, the coordinates. Your foci are going to be standing along the major, the major axis. So the x values are going to stay the same, and only the y values are changing. We're going to do negative 3 plus the square root of 2. And we'll do negative 3 minus the square root of 2. And if you want to get decimals for those values, that's more than fine. Other than that, I hope you were able to understand everything. If you weren't, please get that appropriate help that you're seeking. Thank you for watching the video.